Fright Night is a talk show with published authors, writers, and content creators discussing both the creative and technical sides of writing, as well as the industry surrounding it, from novels to screenplays to comics and more. And now, here's your host, author Travis I. Sivart. Welcome to Write Night. Tonight we'll be talking about self-publishing platforms, and we'll uh, get back to that in a few moments. I want to introduce myself. I am Travis I. Sivart, uh, internationally acclaimed, well actually, for nothing. I'm an author. I've just finished the second book in the Silver and Smith Chronicles. I am doing the rough draft edit, and it's amazing. Tara, my editor, is here. I'll let her talk in a moment. I am doing almost a full rewrite. Something has changed in my writing to where I am changing a lot. And I'm curious to see if you're going to see a difference when you finally get the book. Now, let's go ahead and let you introduce yourself and where people can find your work. Hey, I'm Tara Muller, and I am author under several pen names. I'm an editor, and I am dreamer-in-chief at DreamPunk Press. You can find DreamPunk Press at dreampunkpress.com. We're also on Twitter, we're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Do a search for DreamPunk Press and you'll find us. If you're more interested on my personal writing, you can go ahead and find me at my blog, which is www.taramoller.com. Robert? And I am Jerk, author and game designer, and you can find my stuff at wicked-clever.com. Now, something else I want to let everybody know about, because Tara hasn't mentioned it. We've had her on a, a quite a few episodes recently, but she didn't mention it this episode. Dream Punk Press has a Halloween anthology coming out. Now, check out the website, sign up for a newsletter. That's how you get the invite. To Jen, in a chat, I'm looking at you right now. <laughs> I love his comments. Um, she is paying $100 and a hardback copy of the book, if I'm not mistaken, yes. per story. So this is something to look at. Another reason to check her out, if you're a new author or an established author and you want your work spread out a little bit, you want a, a good start with a quality, small publishing company, check that out. Now, disclaimers for the show. I want to let everybody know who's picked up the podcast, downloaded, and lis- is listening to it right now. We have a live, interactive chat audience right now. So you're going to hear me go, ding that bell, and read some comments, or just read them off. So when you hear me saying, so-and-so said, it's our interactive audience. We record live at twitch.tv slash Travis Tavern Talk at least once a month for this quite often more. Um, Now, for chat, just so you guys know, we're going to read your comments, but only if they're relevant and or entertaining. So if we don't get to everything you guys say, it's because it really didn't matter and we don't care. No, I'm kidding. (laughs) Robert cared, and it mattered to Tara. I'm just a jerk. So (laughs) we we might not get to all of them is the point. So now let's let these awesome folks... (laughs) <laughs> introduce himself. Wait, did you guys already introduce yourselves? Do we already do that? We should get to the topic then. I just like yeah, you so much, that. I want to hear it again. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about self-publishing platforms, which I have a, enough knowledge to talk about it, but not like these two. These two have expansive knowledge and experience in this. I have mostly played with Smashwords, and Amazon, and one or two others, as well as reaching out to other anthologies, which, let me say this right now, when it comes to self-publishing, for newer authors out there, a great way to get started is by submitting short stories to different anthologies, like I just mentioned with Dream Punk Press and Tara. This is a great way to get started, to get your feet wet, to get some confidence, to get some feedback. Now, Beyond that, oh my God, where do we start with self-publishing platform, guys? I, I think the obvious one, we got to attack the 
and that is Amazon. Now, that one I could speak with authority, but let's give you guys a chance to voice it, and I'll fill in blanks that I think might need. Oh, Andrea says, advantage and disadvantage of self-publishing. That's a great point that we definitely That might should... be a topic all on its own. <laughs> it is, and yeah. I know we've discussed it on previous episodes, uh, possibly with Michael and Aaron, Um but, yeah, Robert, you had some thoughts. Let's let you start. We'll pass it to Tara, and then I'll pop in. Um, yeah, okay. So, uh, yeah, Kennedy says KDP. That, uh, Tara, correct me if I'm wrong, that's what Create Space is known as now? Kindle Direct it? Publishing. Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, Historically, Kindle Direct Publishing. Amazon, because Amazon really wants to push. Well, the ebooks were originally KDP, Kindle Direct Publishing. Create space where the paperbacks they have combined those two uh two years ago something like that yeah longer than that yeah approximately they still have create space stuff on their pages though it's weird but it, it is it's it's a little bit more difficult to navigate now if you were originally pushing on create space and went to kdp um so i actually uh i i'm i believe it or not i love kdp i love Amazon for one reason and one reason only. It's easy. Accessibility. Yeah. It's easy. It is easy to publish a book through Amazon and it's out there in their marketplace. Now, their marketplace is super freaking saturated. Correct. So you might not ever have anybody find your book uh, and they're probably not going to find it organically. But friends and family. So if you are writing a book and it's your first book or your fifth book or whatever and your goal is just to have a book that people can read, then uh, KDP is, a, is honestly, in my opinion, a great option for you. It costs nothing to put your book up there and do it. You, you, you gotta have a cover, uh, you gotta have, but I, do they have a cover creator tool? They I don't do. even know, because I've never used yeah. it. Okay, it's not, it's not great, but you gotta have a cover and you gotta have a, um, uh, I think it's, a Word doc for the interior file. Word doc or um, PDF. There's various things they accept. Or PDF. So it's super easy. Anybody can put a book up there and publish it. And the hoops to jump through, the double checks that they force on you are not going to cost you money when you do it wrong the first time. They're not going to shut you down. They're not going to make you pull your hair out most of the time. Um, I'll toss it over to Tara because I think she disagrees with me on this one. Tara. I have mixed opinions about KDP. I loved Create Space. Okay? Yes. And the product that you got, a physical product out of Create Space, was better than what you get out of KDP for a printed product. Do you think so? It's getting better. I haven't noticed a difference. I'm going to, I, I have a stack of six by nine mm -hmm. standard trade published trade size publications here. Um, and I have them, I'm not gonna show them because you, you can't see it, but it's for me, because there are tactile differences. And so, and I have used several different self-publishing POD and small run printers for different projects. Um, and like I said, KDP, because when you first went and they did the switch to KDP, you put your Kindle in, your, your, your files in for a Kindle product. Yeah. And then they took those files and made your print product. And they realized that wasn't working. So now you have two separate products again. Oh, see, um, I never experienced it when it was one. I went and I had Create Space and KDP. Once they blended it, the first time I did it, it was still two separate products. So it's kind of the exact same process, but one place instead of two. Yeah. They, I, I tried a book when they first said, hey, you know, because you had a year when they were telling us that Create Space was going to go away. Yes. And I tried what was KDP at the time with their print product. <clears throat> That's why I went looking for other POD places. And I'm like, if this is what I'm going to get, which I think that initial feedback from people using it, they went, okay, that's not going to work. So when Create Space went away, 
that aspect of it went away and you have where you can put up your separate print files. And I think they just realized that so many of their veteran users knew what they were doing with, because you, you will do your print file a little bit differently than you will put together your Kindle file. So, yep. Which, by Absolutely. the way, I have now published hardback books with them also. And it oh, yeah. is slightly but significantly different because they don't have the same sizes, which means you have to reformat not just the interior, but the exterior also. And they don't have all the tools in place yet. Yet. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, this was a challenge because they don't have the template for the cover to make it easy and know it's sized right. So you kind of got to put it up and go, well, that's messed up. Let me pull it back down and do it again. We can address that when we talk about Lulu. Say again? Yes. <laughs> Lulu. When we talk about Lulu. Should we just segue to Lulu? No, no. Let no, me go ahead I, and go I through this. Um, okay. Here, here's the down and dirty for Amazon because we don't want to turn this into a commercial for them. Amazon. Right. You go on with a finished product. You upload your Word document or whatever type of document. You upload a cover or use their generator. I don't recommend using their generator. It is definitely recognizable as a Amazon-generated cover, and it looks unprofessional compared to just loading your own file. Um, yeah. And that's what I'm going to tell you about that. You go through all the things. You can... Put it in expanded markets, so it is going into libraries, it is going into schools, it is going on Books a Million, it is going on Barnes & Noble, it's going in all these places. Not physical copies in the store, but it's available on their website. So if you go search yeah. my name on any of their websites, because I've published everything with Amazon, though I published with others previously, I pulled them off and just consolidated for ease, and I didn't sell a single book on any other website ever. Yeah. Unless they were free, then some people would download them, and you n I never saw any review response. Which, by the way, let me add that. If you guys pick up a book of an independently published author, whether it's Amazon or somewhere else, please go do a review for us. Please. Let other people know what you think. It helps. And I don't care if you put one star up there or five stars. Go do a review. Um, here's something else I'm going to say, because I'm hogging the microphone right now away from these two. As... Indie publishing, learn to format your book. Learn yep. to format your book. Pay somebody to do it or learn to do it. Make sure you're not left, left justified. Make sure you've got it block formatted. Make sure you put your chapter breaks in there. I've picked up a book to learn how to play didgeridoo, and the chapters are on the same page, and even it says back to top at the bottom of one chapter, <laughs> one line space, and then a new chapter. And the information is good, but if you look at this guy's book, the paper or the yeah, the paperback has a different color than the Kindle, and the Kindle cover is so much better cuz the it's a fire on the paperback. It it's flames for a didgeridoo book. And I'm confused. And then I saw he had a different <laughs> color for the Kindle with a picture Burn of a fucking movie. didgeridoo on it. Part of my language. I'm sorry. We try not to swear here right night, but it happens. Um, so, okay. Did I kind of cover everything there? You get to choose the price. They do keep... Yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's one other thing. Um, Amazon, if you publish through them, they will give you an ISBN number. Yes, free. Um, which I, I'm not saying you should always do that, but, and it depends on where you want your book. All right. So if you just want it on Amazon, if you're not selling, like you can't sell your book in Target with an Amazon ISBN number on it. They That's can't, not correct. They cannot not correct. process that. Not correct. They're not correct? You can go no. to walmart.com and find my books online. And I only have oh. Amazon issued. Now, Target yes. might be different. You, I don't know. But you, Walmart, it. You can't there. buy it physically in the store. Correct. They can't that stock it on their shelves with an Amazon ISBN. And Tara says I'm wrong again, so go Tara. for it, Tara. I'm going to talk ISBNs really quick. DreamPunk Press buys its own ISBNs. Yep. I can put DreamPunk Press's books wherever the heck I want. Yes. I load them into KDP. 
I own this ISBN, I can put it there. I purchased, I, I put an ISBN on my Kindles that come from, our, our Kindle books that come from uh, Dream Punk Press have an ISBN on them. If you go into Amazon and you go to load one, it says Kindle books don't have to have. According to Bowker's, they do, but so I don't know the rule. The ISBN that Amazon gives you is one that Amazon bought, yes. which means they bought it from Bowker's, which is the only place that you can legally sell ISBNs in this country. It is an, so Amazon is its own publishing house. The reason that you will not walk into Walmart or Target and find your book with an Amazon ISBN on it is because Amazon is their competitor. They are not going to put something on a shelf for someone to buy that is giving money to their competitor. Now, it will go. Walmart, Barnes & Noble, when it's the, the Kindle, you know, when it's a, 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 a Kindle download product, they treat them differently. But for a physical book, Barnes & Noble will not put in their stores a book with an Amazon ISBN unless they know they're going to sell a freaking million copies of it and make yep. enough money that they don't care that Amazon's making just as much money off of it. Yeah. By the way, I started to mention how much Amazon pulls because Tajin mentioned it in the chat. <clears throat> he said 40%. I'm, I've got 30 in my head. So let's say between 30 and 40% yeah. is what they're keeping. They give you a minimum price. You can price above that. I am still terrified of paying 20 bucks for a paperback, which is kind of 15 to 20 bucks is your average for a paperback now. And I'm stuck in the 90s yeah. where I'm like, $8, $12 max. But I'm yeah. wrong on that one. I'm just old. Well, and this sort of gets away from that, but it's important to self-publishing. Paper is a fungible commodity. It fluctuates in price. And most of our paper in the United States comes from overseas. So I have been hit as a publisher with this issue before. In the middle of publishing a book, suddenly the price of paper skyrockets. And now I'm on the hook for money to print a thousand copies of that book. But there's nothing you can do about that. So yes, paper prices between now and the 1990s, there's a reason those books on that cheap paperback paper, seven or eight bucks. That same book, if it were printed today, in the numbers that we can print and self-publishing, yeah, that's a twenty book. Um, can I read some comments? Because so, they're scrolling up. I'm sorry to interrupt absolutely. us because we're hot about this. And, and I'm actually interested to hear their, Robert and Tara's point of view, because I am lazy. That's why I'm on Amazon, because I'm lazy. <laughs> and I want to talk about, Robert mentioned, buying a thousand copies of a book. It's something I don't have the finances to do. And I want to address those things. Those are things, points I want to hit at some point, guys. Sure. Okay. So yeah. scrolling up, um, Kennedy has said, Chris Fox's videos are a great resource for indie authors. To Jen says, don't judge a book by its cover. It's an insult to the entire industry of cover artists. Um, Kennedy says there's a learning curve. Um, probably when loading a book to Katie. Right. <clears throat> and Tajinter does clarify, don't give a one-star review unless if it's earned. I have had reviews going, this was a free download. It's steampunk. Steampunk shouldn't be a genre. I didn't even read it. One star. By the way, yep. to me, that's a positive review because that person's an idiot and it shows. Yep. So if somebody goes yep. looks at the one-star reviews, they're like, well, this review is dull. No, yeah. Uh, readers have expectations, and if the format is off, they will notice. Something I'll yes, tell you about will. editing. Because people say, your cover makes them pick up the book. The blurb makes them open it up and look at it. The first page makes them buy the book. The editing and formatting in editing makes them buy every book afterwards. Yeah. So I've heard one author say, oh, if you can only afford a cover or an editor, get the cover. No. Work an extra month in your day job. Get both. 
Um, it's yeah. important. It's important. Andrea asked about how about self-publishing audiobooks. I have a long commute, and audio is very convenient. Amazon covers that. I'll let you guys address it in other things. I wish Michael Thompson was here to talk about it in other forms. Yeah, I can yeah. talk to, to audiobooks. What's that? I can talk very little on I, it. I can speak with some small authority. Book funnel seems to be a great way that many of my indie friends like to use, says Tajin. And I think I've covered... Can a self-publishing author get their books on the shelf at Target or Walmart? Tara, go. I can go. tell you how to do that. Go, Tara. So, one of the other self-publishing platforms is Ingram Spark. Ingram Spark, yeah, it's going to cost you a little bit unless you have memberships at certain places that get you get discounts. And what I'll is a little bit? A couple. Clarify that, please. Pardon? What is a little bit? Clarify that. Okay. It is $49 for your setup fee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that fee is for both your physical book and an EPUB in their system. It's not a Moby Pocket. It's not a Kindle. It's the EPUB format, which is what Barnes & Noble sells. Okay, um, which is what other um, readers like Kobo, whatever, they take an EPUB format, right? The Moby Pocket, which is what a Kindle is, is proprietary to Amazon. Mm -hmm. Okay, Barnes and Noble can't sell it, um, etc. I can sell it on my website because I'm not Barnes and Noble. <laughs> <laughs> and on, I, in fact, on at Dream Pop Crash, you can download and purchase either a Moby Pocket version, which works on your Kindle, um, or an EPUB um, after they've gone through their exclusivities with Amazon, etc. But Ingram Spark puts your book, and you and and you can get an ISBN from them as well. All right, you can purchase an ISBN from them. Then it has, you know, and it's an Ingram Spark ISBN. It's the same deal with Amazon, okay? But what Ingram Spark does, and it's a little bit harder, they're a little bit pickier about the formatting of your book, and they will kick it back. Your cover, the, there's, there's, it's a higher standard than what Amazon or even Lulu does, and they will kick it back with prob if there are problems. Yes. because it goes into the Ingram catalog. Is there a charge each time they kick it back? There was when I did it. Yes. And what there is that? There can be. What is that fee? It depends on at what stage. If there's one where, where, where they do the online little checks and it comes back and you make the fix and whatever, there's no extra charge. If right. it's after the fact and they've gone through theirs and then When they have to change problem, the printing setup to pay to fix it. Yeah, and that's, for me, because that's what happened to my very first book, I wanted back, and the only way to do it, really do it, was through Ingram Spark Lightning Source, and I ended up paying $150 in setup fees. I didn't know what I was doing that first time, um, and it kicked it back, and there's a new setup fee to submit it. Kicked it back, new setup fee to resubmit it. What's it cost you guys? Actually less er, about it yes what's your it is. It average is. cost what? to publish a book not amazon like with everything editor and formatting and cover and yeah all let's, that? let's go that way well you have an editor and a cover whether you go on amazon whether you go to lulu whether you go to ingram right, right. so let's talk amazon fees which is free right Ingram, which if you're a member of IBPA, which is the International uh, Independent Book Publishers Association, Book Publishers. IBPA, no. it's Publishing Association. The B is 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 I'm 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 blanking. Bastards. And I am a member. There you get they get you a discount, and it's free. Oh. They waive the forty nine dollar setup fees because you are a member with their expectations are that if you're a member of that, 
there are standards that they put out to you that help you make sure that your book hits the standards for traditional publishing. Yeah. Okay. Which is why they will waive that $49 setup fee if you're that member. And trust me, if you can do it, do it because that is a really, really good organization. They do a lot for you. The other organization that you can get a discount to have that wave is Ally. Um, it's based out of the UK, but you can, can join. It's like $99 a year. And if you're publishing more than one book, guess what? Uh, it's paid, paid for it. your two fees. Okay, I'm a member of both. But with Ingram Spark, because they get it into the Ingram catalog, which is what bookstores and libraries use to purchase books. So. Andrea asked real quick, <clears throat> what do you have to do to be a member? Sign up, pay a fee. Okay, go pay on with what you were saying. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing that says like, Ingram's not going back and looking and going, are you following all of the rules that IVPA say you have to, do? no. The idea is if you're putting that money and you're paying attention and you're actually treating it as a business, which is what I'm doing, then you're going to do that because you're, you want to have a quality product. You want to meet those standards. Um, and that's why. Again, I use the ISBNs that I purchased through Bowker's myself that are identified as a Dream Hunt Press ISBN in Ingram. Let's you can talk about like, that. How do you one just how do you purchase an ISBN and what does that cost? Because it was mentioned in chat and I can read that if you like to help you out. Uh, Kennedy, okay. Kennedy's right. Kennedy says Bowker sells a single ISBN for $125. Bowker also sells a yes. block of 10 for $295, $295. 100 for $575. Yep. Last I checked. Tara, sound right? Yes. Okay. However, yep. if you're a member of IBPA, you can get 15% off. Okay. I guess it. Look at a couple of these organizations because they're putting out these standards. They're helping you do this. They're showing you, they're training you on what you're doing that these Valkers, Ingram, will give you, you know, they have like discounts all the time. And like I said, right now, Valkers, IBP, you can get 15% off. So I didn't pay 575 for those last hundred that I bought. But because I am publishing, they, they never run out. I, I actually finally just had to buy my second hundred. Congratulations, um, well done. Yay! Um, but that's okay, because you know, for each version that we publish from Doom Prime Press, which is an EPUB, a Moby Pocket slash Kindle, an open dyslexic font version, and a traditional deja vu font version, they each need their own ISBN. Yes. So for each title that we publish, I'm using four. And this year we're using five because I'm also doing a hardcover kind of experiment limited edition. But that's, again, that's if you want to get your books into bookstores. And yes, because it's still POD. So a bookstore is not having to buy 200 copies of your book, they're buying two. No. I'm getting money from bookstore sales right now. It's still, I, I'm like, oh, still POD on which platform? Ingram? Ingram. Okay, so we're not talking about any of the others yet. It's still POD. So I, I want to hit on something that Tara mentioned here, but it kind of got glossed over. Um, if you are buying your own ISBNs, there is one place you want to do that, and that is Bowkers, B O W K E R S dot com. There are ads out there that will try to sell you discount ISBNs. And what these are are other publishers that bought too many are now selling their extras. And when somebody looks your book up by ISBN number, including the Library of Congress catalog, it will list that other company as the owner of the ISBN and therefore the publisher Good information. of the book when it's looked up by ISBN number. So this is not something you want to buy a discount ISBN number on. You don't want to do it. It's a cost. That cost, I almost always forget about it. Every time I publish 
a role-playing game book um, because my books are in local gaming stores, because I have a distributor who is not Amazon, because I pay to print the books, send them to my distributor who then sends them to local gaming stores. They must have an ISBN number. They cannot be sold through the system without that. So every time I drop 125, because up until now I have not had Terra's confidence to drop 575, a much better deal to get 100, but it's always like, this might be my last book, 125. If I may. Yeah, when I went to, to, to publish my first yeah. book, I had a trilogy and I'm like, started counting up, I'm like, I might not use those whole 100, but it's still gonna be cheaper than buying 10. Yeah. Andrea has asked, Tara, this is for you. Do you have the open dyslexic font books for kids? We do not publish children's books yet. What about the YA? YA, yes. Okay. Our YA in middle grade, all of our titles that are publishing this year will be published in both fonts. Most of our back title, our, our back catalog, have been converted so that we have offered in both because they're, they're not that old. Um, there's just a few titles that are not. Um, and going forward, again, the four definite, five this year is our experience to see whether or not hard copies are something that folks are gonna want or not. Um, but yes, we, we publish open dyslexic on everything and our first children's book that will be published next year will only be published in open dyslexic form. And Andrea also asks, what is the age group for YA? <sighs> <laughs> Differs on who you talk to. Okay. So standard is age 13 to age 18 is the standard definition for YA. But as a parent, there's a big difference between a 13-year-old and an 18-year-old. And so there is fluctuation in there. Middle grade is for like 9, 10, 11, 12. There's some overlap. Some 13-year-olds will read it. Some 12-year-olds will read YA. Okay. Back to the publishing thing. And when you're done, Robert, I want to hear where you've been publishing at and your advice Absolutely. and thoughts on that. Yeah, I don't think I have a whole lot more about Ingram unless um, somebody has a question. It's a little bit harder. The interface is not as intuitive. You kind of have to, to do it, but I've been doing it enough and I was very, very lucky that I had a bit of a mentor in, in helping me walk through that and he prepared me for the, the possibility of kickback and um, because I know PDF, I've had the training. I When he said, well, they're looking for this and this and I'm like, oh, I know exactly what that is. So I was able to do that for the print, for the interior files. And I shared that information with uh, Morvan who does all of our graphic, our, our covers does all of the graphics and the formatting of that and showed them what I meant. And they're like, I can do that out of, so we, it was great, loaded them up our first Dot book into uh, Ingram and they accepted them with a Nice. But it's because I had a mentor that kind of prepped me for it. But I had the background knowledge of PDF and what they meant by gotcha. the standards they were looking for to know what they were talking about. So Robert, who do you tend to go through or what multiple companies have you gone through and where's your comfort zone, pros and sure. cons, so on? Um, I have to, because I write and publish in two very different industries. I have to go through multiple and it depends on what I'm writing. So um, if I'm writing fiction, honestly, my comfort zone is with Amazon, with KDP. And uh, that doesn't just mean that I can only, like the only way to get my book is through Amazon. I can print out 250 books I got to pay for them. I pay the printing cost to Amazon. Um, and uh, then I can take those to a convention. I can sell them in person. I can sell them to small bookstores that I know that are not then dependent on the system. They can just slap their own barcode on the back or whatever, and they can sell them. I don't do a lot of that. I do a lot of conventions to sell my books. Um, so I'm perfectly happy just sitting on Amazon, 
because it's the easy one, it is the comfortable one, and honestly, by using them, I do have a larger reach than I can reach uh, just on my own. Right. And I will have people come up to me at conventions and say, hey, can I read your book on my Kindle? Yeah, absolutely. Go buy it from Amazon because that cost me zero dollars and you're going to pay three bucks and I get a portion of that. I'm okay. Sure. That's just like I look at it as free money. So what about when you print the money, out your own? Well, when I print out my own, I will tell people same thing at a convention. Can I just get this from Amazon? Yes, you can get it from Amazon. But what you don't get is the personal touch of me signing it here. So Amazon doesn't like it if I just show up at their warehouse and start signing books. They're not good with that. With the role-playing games, what company are you self-publishing okay, through that's not Amazon? So with the role-playing games, you can get my books on Amazon. Not published. They're nothing through Amazon other than they're a storefront. Right. Uh, for the role-playing games, I self-publish, and this is where it's going to get weird. One, uh, for my most recent game, I did not want to order a 1,000 copies. All right? I didn't hit that mark on the Kickstarter to be able to afford that because that's a nice chunk of money mm -hmm. for a for a full color hardback book a thousand copies color interior was going to cost me about fifteen thousand dollars um to, to do the whole thing uh and i didn't have that I, I didn't raise that to invest in it so i printed these actually on lulu which i know tara can talk about too lulu uh uh it is a print on demand um, it is actually pretty easy to get stuff set up and through. Um, but I did it so that I could print out these nice copies, nice print on demand copies to have to fill Kickstarters and take to shows. I have it on their web store. I, and I've never sold a single copy on Lulu's web store. So actually, if you're going through Lulu to print books, to publish and print books, uh, and the ISBN, oh, this is not a Lulu copy. I thought it was a Lulu copy. There's no ISBN on the back of this. This one was actually printed through Drive Through RPG. Um, this, <laughs> so um, the other ones have an ISBN on it. Um, and I'll talk about Drive Through RPG in just a second. But if you're just printing the books, Lulu does a nice hardback book. The website you want to use though is express.lulu.com. Spell it. If you go through just Lulu.com, you end up paying about twice as. If spell, you go through Express, spell Express. Starts with an X. Okay, so the letter so X, X P R E S. Yep, X P R E S S. dot Lulu. dot com. Um, they expect you to know a little more setting up. They don't hold your hand. It's not the graphical interface. Um, but if you're to that point, uh, you should be able to to get through it. Basically, you load up your files. They've got the, the text blocks, but it's not the, okay, you pick out your size based on these pictures, point and click, and then you pick out this, point and click. It's You've got drop-down menus. you got to fill it out yourself. But uh, if you're ordering, I, I even think on a one-to-one -one book, you're actually saving money through Express than Lulu. Lulu as a company is more the, we want to hold your hand through the process and you are storefront. Because you've never done this before. Which, by the but way, from a printing size, I did my hardbacks for Steampunk for Simpletons through Lulu, and I don't think I okay. don't know if Express was around at that point or not. But it was 2013. Not back then, no, I don't think and, it was. And uh, I was very pleased because they had nice dust jackets and all that sort of thing, as opposed to just a printed hardback cover. And I do like a nice yeah. dust jacket. Okay, go on, Robert. Um. So for role-playing games, there you go. That's an. Uh, for role-playing games, um, for PDF versions of role -playing games, because you don't get role-playing games in Kindle books. It's just not. It wouldn't work, <laughs> All right? You get a PDF. You can read PDF, and you. That's Drive Through RPG. There's some other companies out there, but honestly, that's Drive Through RPG, and it's another saturated market, uh, just like Amazon is. Not as bad because it's just role-playing games. Um, but that's the place to go. If you go anywhere else, nobody finds your stuff, really. Um, and But for physical books, for physical role-playing games, if I'm not printing it through Lulu, like I did for this one, um, I actually have 
to contract with a, it's not print on demand anymore. I contract with a printer um, and the printer I use, I have an agent, not that sells my books, but I have an agent that arranges for printing of my books. And um, so I contact the agent with the specs. This is the next book I'm printing out. These are the quotes I need. I need it at this size. I need color. I want ribbon bookmarks. I want this, this. So I give her basically a wish list. And then she formulates a quote, working with different printers, um, based on the paper that I want and all this stuff. And she kind of guides me through how we're going to get the best deal and how we're going to get the best looking book. And she gets a cut, all right, of what it costs. Um, and the printer that we almost always go with U.S.-based printer, they're Jostens. They're the yearbook company, Jostens, because during the off-season, like the summer, they want to keep their people fully employed and provide health insurance and everything and keep their presses running, so they job out time on their presses, and you pay basically their rate to print your book. Um, and it's printed in the United States, and you can print your books overseas in, in China. A lot of role-playing game companies do that in China or the Philippines and have them shipped over. But I've noticed by the time I pay everything, including the shipping from like Tennessee to my house in Ohio, I save money. I don't save thousands of dollars over printing in China, but I get a nice product and I save money and it's made here. Now, um, where do people so, go but, to research like what kind of paper they want, this, the, the cloth bookmark oh, thing, okay. the ribbon bookmark, yes. all this so, stuff. Where, um, if somebody's just starting out, where do they go to learn all this? Absolutely. You ask for a sample. Um, and, and printing Who? companies will Who do send you, ask? you a sample. Huh? What do you Google do you when ask? you first start? What website do you go to that can help you if you don't have a mentor like Tara had or whatever? Right. What, where do you go? What do you do? Um, it, so I'll, I'll be honest, it's not easy, uh, because yes, Googling print my physical book, you're going to get things like loose ranks. How do you break into the traditional offset printing? Uh, even contacting, I reached out and I contacted yellow pages, traditional offset printers. And when I told them I wanted a hardback book, they're like, oh my God, you want a thousand books? That's going to take us. We haven't printed hardback books in like 20 years. We're just printing flyers now and spiral bound stuff. We can spiral, but like, no, no, these, these companies have to exist. So to get the sample books, I reached out to the companies that first talk to people in the industry already, already doing what you want to do. Like for role playing games, there's plenty of people out there publishing role playing games. And I ask them, who are you printing with? Now I'm the one that gets asked, who are you printing with? And most people, especially in indie publishing are happy to share that information. We want to see these companies that print our books at a good deal survive. So can I'm our, not going to hide the information. Can, can our viewers and listeners go to wicked-clever.com and drop you an email going, dude, I heard the podcast. Absolutely. Where do I go? Absolutely. You can email me. There you I'll go, tell guys. you everything I know. Um, but uh, the way I got a sample book, I actually contacted the easiest printer to find, Print Ninja. They print in uh, China. And there's a thing on their website. Send me a free sample. Type in your email. And I, even though I don't print with Print Ninja, it's Thank right you. here beside my. Say yeah, again, Tara. It's a nice little sample book. Tara, say that again. I said they have nice stuff. They do have nice stuff. And so I can open this little thing that they sent me. They also sent me a bunch of quality. And I can flip through this book and it tells me, okay. That's a that's a twelve point cover. Okay, right there. let that's me interrupt real quick for everybody critical. listening to the podcast. The book he's showing is not a sample of his book; it's a free sample Correct. of their print quality and their print type. And this is what they're going to yep. send you. You're not sending them your files, and they're sending you a copy of your book. It's what they have on the shelf that they use as their sampler platter. Yeah, go on. You can go to um, like Office Max or Office Depot, and they've got the same thing there. It's the same kind of thing. You flip through it, you feel the paperweight, you find the one you want. You look at how they print, what inks they use, you find the one you want. So there you go. That's that's how you find 
those things. And and honestly, I the thing that that worked the best for me was find books on your shelf that you like. Like I like the weight of this Star Wars role playing game book. Let me compare that to my sample until I find the paper that matches. Okay, that's the paper I want to use. I did the same thing when I formatted my first book. I went and I said, you know what? The book that seems the closest to this one is this Charles DeLint book on my shelf. How wide were his margins? And I measured them. Okay, so my margins, I want them that wide. Where did he put his name on the page? Okay, I'm going to put my name there because you find what the professionals are doing this and is, you copy that look. This is a piece of invaluable advice. This is something Tar and I have told people for years now is when you first start publishing, go to your own bookshelf or if you don't have one, go to your local library and find your favorite book like Robert just said and look at it and copy that style, that formatting. Um where the name is put on the front cover versus the title. Is it in a framework of prettiness or is it just up there? That's something else if you're self-publishing. Do keep in mind your fonts are super important on your cover. Yes. There are tons of pretty fonts and they look like crap on a cover. You can't read them, let alone on a I spine. Can't read it. <laughs> yeah, you, you are better off going with like one of these common bland ones that people can read than a pretty fancy one that they're like, I don't even know what that book's called. And there's a trend on that right now in, in a lot of YA books that the curly cues and everything and you, you can't tell what the title is. See, this is why I say Ugh. you put the title in a bland one and then you put a nice framework around it with curly cues and everything. And this way it stands yeah. out from the cover art itself because the, the title is stylized in a pretty little box or stonework or whatever. Uh, Kennedy is making some comments here. Um, let me see if there's anything. Re uh, here, here's my favorite. Go ahead, man. Go. He said ninjas in China. That's a tiger in Africa. That's so a Monty Python. So ninja, when they send you the book, also sends you... A samurai sword pen. That's that's how much they want your business. I got this little samurai sword pen from them too, um, and they're not a bad company to you. And they do a really nice thing, and they'll do some nice things that you cannot get easily in the United States, like foil embossing and mm. all sorts of other stuff. Uh, they're a big print company. What I run into is by the time I ship it to the United States. It's. I would just rather forego some of those little touches and get it printed here and not worry about the shipping. Um, so, but that's me. Other so, people, if you're printing more than I print, go for what. Tar has been looks nodding good. along. Feels good. Do you have anything to add that you didn't have a chance to throw in, Tara? I, I want to talk about Lulu just a little bit. Okay, and just so you guys know, we're at almost 49 minutes now. I don't mind going longer. I just want to make sure you guys are good for it. So let yeah, me know when you're ready. We started a little early. Really quick about the quality of the books. I, in front of me, and, and it's partly just so that I can, I'm not going to show them, but it's to help me remember what I want to say. When you look at paper, I choose in each platform this what is described as the same paper, but it's very different. <laughs> Create Space has a nice paper, or KDP, okay? It has a nice paper. It is the cheapest that you will be able to purchase your own copies of. Be aware, if you're a Prime member, there's no free shipping with it. Right. Okay, you're still paying for shipping at right. KDP, even though it is associated when you log in, you're logging in using your Amazon login, if that's how you have it set up. And it yep. will go to what looks like your Amazon checkout to check out, but there's no prime. No. <laughs> you're paying for shipping, so you have to understand that. But it is the cheapest, oh, the, the most if I may, a quick point. Mm -hmm. When you're ordering books from Amazon, your own books... Now, the hardbacks at this point in time do not have any kind of discount. You're paying full price. But for paperbacks, when you're ordering them, 
Um, they do not charge you. It does not come out of your bank account till after it's printed, boxed, and they slap the label on it. So a couple yes. days before you get it. So if you're going to go and buy five books or 500 books, don't touch that money in your bank account. Don't forget about it. Be aware that's not coming out for another two to three weeks. Yep. And then suddenly that money disappears. And that has, uh, when you're working on a uh, hand-to-mouth budget, you have to be aware. Leave that money in there. Or suddenly your books are printed. They ain't coming, though, because you can't afford to pay for them. Tara, please go on. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. No, that's okay. That's a good point. Um, because there's lead time out of Amazon, too. There's that two- to three-week lead time. And if you're talking Christmas... It can be four weeks. Again, it's a nice quality book, but it can be inconsistent. Yes. Which is what you're paying for, all right? You, you When you talk about you get what you pay for, okay? Um, a lot of times, and, and I put the books in each platform for different reasons, and I want to talk, I am going to get back to Lulu real quick. But I wanted to talk about quality because it's a it's a big thing. There will be issues with the cover, the front cover, bleeding over onto the spine of the books from KDP a lot for us, and it's the exact same file that I'm uploading into the other platforms, and I don't have that problem. So the problem is not with the cover file, okay? However. If I'm going to go somewhere in person and I get this, I can discount. I can go ahead and I can sell and say, there's 25% off. I can sell this one for half price and I'm still making money, but I'm in person putting a signature in there or, you know, it's a, it's a dream punk press thing where, where I've got everybody's stuff. So you can, in person, you can start discounting with these and be safe that you're still making money. I want to move to Ingram. Oh. Sorry. Thank you. Appreciate the, the interruption here. Kennedy has asked a few things. Kennedy, is, I'm going to read his comments, and I'm going to give a quick answer here. And finding artists, look online. If you can go to conventions with an artist alley, look at their stuff, ask to take a photo of it with their card. By the way, most of the time, as I understand it, the artist owns the artwork, and the buyer is licensing it. You can use it in promotion, but you have to negotiate with the artist if you want to sell merchandise, T-shirts, etc. Yes and no. You draw up and sign a different contract with that artist, and what that contract says sticks, Kennedy. So with mine, I always set it up so I can set it up and, and merchandise that cover separately on other items, but so can my artists. Last thing I want to do is take a small creator, such as myself, and limit them from showing yeah. their work. Now, it is in there. They cannot sell that cover to somebody else to use on their book, but they can definitely make prints, shirts, coffee cups, whatever the fuck they want, and sell it yes. separately, and so can I. Um, so that's individual and separate, and we have done whole shows on covers. So, and we will probably do more shows, and contracts are important. Tara, thank you for letting me interrupt. Please go on. Lulu, or so, whatever. <laughs> books from Ingram Spark. So, you get a little bit of a messed up book from KDP, you're still paying for it. Right. So, I got, um, and I had done an order of books um, for Created the 21 Dragons, Wyvern Knoll. And the one that is that I kept that's on my shelf because I, I have a I love me shelf of all of the Dream Punk Press books was crooked. All right, there's a problem with it, but I got it for free. <laughs> so they gave an, an extra book because the first one came through their press with a problem. It was their press, they corrected it. So the rest of the books were fine with the cover and everything, but I got a free book that I could have given to somebody as an ARC as a free read for a review. Right. That didn't cost me anything. Right. However, your paper is thinner than what I get from KDP or Lulu. Thin paper isn't like a problem it. till you turn the page and you can read the opposite page through the paper. And then suddenly you're like, wow, this is cheap. Yeah, it, it's not too bad. 
but it's a feel to me as well. It feels thinner, the book, when you pick it up and you do that, like you rifle through the pages, it just feels not as substantial. Right. But this is what's, but, but this is actually the standard for traditional publishing, which means you're getting a slightly better quality paper out of KDP. Yes. Okay. So for my personal books, all right, so then I want to touch on Lulu. And Lulu's then I want to touch on smash words after this. Yeah. Is Go ahead. an even better quality paper than KDP. I've never had a problem with the cover. They're substantial. They're beautiful. Yes. Ingram and Lulu cost more than, KD, than, than out of KDP. But you get a consistent quality. Yes. Even though I don't like the quality at Ingram as much, I don't like the paper, Every book is the same quality. So there's a consistency there. That's um, important. Which is, for something in a bookstore, I don't care. It's going to be exactly like everything else in that bookstore. And that's the only thing. I don't buy my copies from Ingram. One thing that you can do with Ingram, okay, it's harder to do with, with create space or with KDP, but you can drop ship. So if you have somebody that wants to buy 10, um, and you go in and you set it up, it's kind of made for drop shipping a little bit. The other thing you can do in Ingram is you can set up a slightly different file and you can include signatures. So you can create a sign and then you just go, is this gonna be a signed copy? And you can add that, they add it to it so you have, and it's different from your regular one. I've never done it. I don't know if there's additional fees. I think it's something new but there's a possibility. Now, is it a wet signature, meaning that you inked it yourself? Like I said, it's new, I don't know. Look at the terminology works. there. Yeah, pardon? I said, look at that terminology there. <laughs> wet signature? Yeah, no, it's it's a fair terminology and self-explanatory, it's, it's good. Yeah. yeah. So, for me, the quality that I like is out of Lulu. The cost out of Lulu is comparable to the cost out of Ingram for a slightly better quality. When you go in, it looks like it's a little bit cheaper in Ingram, but there's a processing fee that you pay for. Okay, so they'll get not a big processing fee, but it is a, there's a processing fee for it that you pay. So technically Lulu, and this is standard regular Lulu, because I don't, I, I, I'll be honest, when you said express there's another thing that i was thinking about was express which i got to talk to you and, and find out because there's um when you said that what i took as express is actually it connects to my website <laughs> so we'll talk about Maybe that maybe after the show that's how i use Lulu. here's what i'm going to tell you guys we're almost at an hour i am happy to keep going i'm good i can wrap up in 10 minutes in 10 minutes? Is that what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> she got a lot to say still. Don't forget, I still I, want to I cover do. at least two different things. Okay, I will finish just a little bit with Lou and then I'll... Robert, talk. you good? I won't, I won't talk about the other publisher. I'm fine. We're good. Go on, Tara. As long as we're all good, we can continue as long as we need. Here's what I'm going to say before Tara goes on. This is a huge topic, guys. There is a lot it to is. learn. Really and. Between the three of us, we probably have 25 years of experience combined just from our past seven or eight years individually. So there is a lot to learn, and it's constantly changing because technology, blah, blah, blah. So everything we're telling you is a personal experience, and there's more out there, and there's simpler ways, and there's harder ways, and there's, but you get what you pay for. Tara, continue with yes. Lulu. You got 10 minutes. Let me interject really quick. Go ahead, Robert. Because there's a question on the chat. Lulu Mon is not the same company as Lulu. All right. They are two different companies. One makes leggings and clothing. One makes books. So, no, not the same company. <laughs> and Andrea has yeah, suggested that we do another show to expand on this topic. Sound familiar to another topic? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this Send is your questions. You right, right at uh, right night show at gmail.com. Tara, go on. We're done interrupting you. So the way that I use Lulu, 
DreamHuntPress.com is hosted on Shopify. And I can connect my Shopify through Express Lulu <laughs> to Lulu. So when somebody goes to DreamConcrest.com, it, it, it's a, 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 not all of them yet, but most of the books there. When they click and they purchase a hard copy of the book, a, a paperback, it's going to Lulu. Lulu's printing the book and they're sending it to them for me. So instead of me having to purchase a bunch of copies to always have on hand because I'm a small publisher and I never know how many co copies I'm actually going to, to sell of any particular title. This means that to me, I am being responsible. I don't have a, an extra bunch of books that are gonna go to a landfill that I can't do it or into, you know, into a recycling processor. So they purchase the books and it goes straight to Lulu I get paid from Shopify, I pay Lulu, and Lulu prints packages on the thing. It even has DreamPunk Press on it, so it looks like it's coming from me, and they ship the books for me. That is the Express that I use, and when you said Express, that's what um, came to my mind. They have an API version of the same thing. The Express is the one that specifically connects to, to Shopify, but they have an API version that what you is can API? connect to whatever website you want. What is API? You're hosting yourself at WordPress. Tara, Tara, what is API? It's what they call it. I, it's it's. If you go to Lulu, they'll they'll talk, they'll they'll okay. explain it. It's just there's one for Shopify, and then there's like one for every other website available. Okay. So it, it's I don't understand. I don't know the full acronym, but it's basically an app interface yes okay so it's you can do this with all sorts of things paypal anything it's back-end developer tools ah. that allow you to essentially link a website kennedy to has said service. application programming interface that might be there correct yes. thank that you kennedy correct. go on tara so you set it up and it is not setting it up to put it in their store the own, you can set it, you know, it, it's not putting it into the store. It's not putting into a regular Lulu account. Yes, you gotta know what you're doing. What, the way I do it is I have a Lulu account because it's the same process. I will set it up in there, make sure everything works, get the a, a copy, make sure that everything in it is right because it's gonna be the same way. And then those are the files that I upload into the Express and set them up and then when folks go to my website and go to purchase a book, like I said, I, I don't have to go, ooh, there's this, I've got to package it, I've got to have boxes, I've got to have, that's all being handled by Lulu. Very good. So should I go on with the other things? Are you good? I'm good. Now here's what I'm gonna tell all the listeners and viewers. Can I, can I? Yes, Robert, one moment, but here's what I'm gonna tell you. I've done this for years. I'm overwhelmed right now. It's understandable <laughs> if your head is spinning, keep in mind you can download this episode and listen to it again and again and take some notes because we're constantly learning and shifting and changing. Robert, go. Um, I wanted to just touch really quick on, uh, Tara mentioned at some point Amazon shipping and uh, the money coming right. out of your account later and that was the discussion the other thing to know is um amazon like they do will make it right for instance if they send a box of books to the wrong address and it ends up at an empty house covered in beer and poop and you hunt through the neighborhood for two weeks to find your box of books they will attempt to make it right but because of author discounts and because of not prime shipping included their formula will always come out different than what you have paid and you will end up losing a little bit of money um it's happened to me multiple times it's not a reason not to use them. errors are few and far between uh and tara talked about the difference in print quality and spines being misaligned they have multiple just a little bit but it makes a difference it they does. have multiple printers throughout the country 
and you will notice if you order from Amazon regularly, you'll see this was printed in Indiana, this was printed in Illinois, this was printed in North Carolina. And it depends on your the size of your order, when you put it in, there's no way to control this. Some of those guys or gals, some of those printing shops are better than others. They take more care with your books. One thing I'll tell you about Amazon is they uh, third party a lot of stuff. Now, once they yeah. do it enough, they own it and they build their own, but till then, you can see differences. I do want to mention this to anybody who is looking at indie publishing and you want your books in a bookstore. Some of the rules of that is quite often there is buyback in bookstores. If they buy 20 copies or 10 copies and they don't sell them within a certain amount of time, you have to pay them and walk out with your books in your arms. You have to, or have them shipped and you pay for the shipping. Um, this is something Andrea in chat mentioned when, when I said this is a huge expansive topic that's changing and we're still learning, though we're well experienced, you can send your questions into rightnightshow at gmail.com because we can revisit this. There is so much to go through and there is no one single answer. I wanted to talk about Smash Books and my experience on that. Smash Books, for me, and you guys feel free to disagree if you've used them. The process you have to go through to get a book published there is basically what it is everywhere else. But they have like these weird things you got to do to make your book formatting correct that even after years of experience, I look at it and go, what the heck does that mean? And they have like, click on our format guide and read it. And I do, and I'm still confused. <laughs> and also on Smash Words. I've never sold a single book. I've only given away free books when they have their free book time. I've never had a single book sold. And those smash words distributes it other places. So pros and cons again. I am not bashing smash words. I know other people who have had great success on it. I have not. Tara, I see you making hand motions. And Robert, you're making faces. You guys got some quick thoughts on smash words? I've sold three copies. Okay. On smash words. I understand the guide, but it's because they get into this, the, the nitty gritty of, of your word setup using styles and all of that back formatting that I have done for almost three decades. Okay. Wordwin mentions oh. if you don't use Microsoft Word, you can ignore 90% of the formatting guide, which is a handy thing to know, unless it's the only thing, yes. like myself, you know, is Microsoft Word. Um, so I'll throw out a controversial statement right here. If you're professionally printing books, get away from Microsoft Word books. Um, drop it in a layout pro and lay out your book or pay someone to do it because unless you know what you're doing with Microsoft unless you really know what you're doing and you can still end up with issues. Yes. Yeah. But you have to know how to fix them and then I load them. Yeah. I do stuff initially in Microsoft Word, but again, I I have it set up. I know the right. back back the the back end of it. Um, Everything I publish in, is in Microsoft Word. I I which I, uh, <laughs> I I'm hearing I'm you, sorry. Robert, and I'm not arguing with you, but apparently, I guess I know what I'm doing. Because you, you might. They're coming there, out correct. There are things that I can do even in Scribus, which I don't use anymore, free and source. There are things I can do like that in Scribus that you could spend all day trying to get it right in Microsoft Word. Well, there's, there's a difference between a word processor and a layout program, a publishing program. Interesting. Which is why Microsoft has Microsoft Publisher. Correct. And by yes. the way, Kennedy asked, can you do a public service announcement about vanity presses? I cannot. Mm. I don't know what he's asking for I, there. I'm not. So this is, I believe, what he's asking carefully around this subject. Vanity press is, it can mean two possible different things, but what most people use it to mean is it is another company 
that handles, that you pay to handle the editing and layout and formatting of a book. And a lot of them seem to be set up like pyramid schemes or scams in that they're going to do all this work. You're going to pay them all this money. And they say, you'll be a big published author. Your book will be in bookstores. You can make millions of dollars. And maybe, but I've never seen it happen. Everything a vanity press can do for you, you can learn to do yourself and save that money. Now, the way, and I've gotten into debates with vanity press publishers on panels at conventions about this. For some people, it is a useful service, okay? For some people that do not have the skills, the time, the patience, whatever, to learn how to format their book, how to turn it into a Kindle book, how to, all these things that you can do doesn't necessarily mean that you want to do them or that you would do them well. Me personally, I say hire an independent editor, hire an independent cover designer, hire that so you have the control don't turn your control over to another company making promises for money. What I've All seen right? for but that's me. Vanity Presses is you pay a seven to twelve thousand dollars and we'll publish your book. Correct. Yeah. But now apparently that's they do these the first. What's that? Guess who markets it? We do. Yes. <laughs> yeah. That's something else I'm that's gonna, the hardest part. I want to mention before <laughs> yeah. we wrap this up, because we're at an hour and 12 minutes now for this show, just so you guys know. Um, and I don't mind going long because it, it's a great topic, but uh, I totally lost my line of thought. What was I talking about? It's late. Uh, vanity Presses, uh, Marketing Your Own Work. Marketing Your Own Book. Um, any of these companies, they do not necessarily publicize when you get lost in the right. void, when you're shouting into the void, here's my book, it's up to you to go find the places where people go, ooh, I want to know more about that book. Whether that's through paid advertisement, whether it's through social media, whether it's through whatever you do, as Robert mentioned earlier in the show, if you just want a book out there that your friends and family can pick up, great, here's a link, go do that. If you're looking to give it to the world, that's a whole nother set of money. So the first set of money, like we said, Amazon, you can go through and not pay a penny, but you get what you pay for. And you're still paying for editors, you're still paying for covers, you're still paying for formatting or whatever you have to pay for that you don't have the skill set to do with these other companies. Maybe there's a little more help in some of those areas, but you're putting a lump out up front. And maybe that lump is seven hundred dollars, maybe it's seven thousand, maybe it's fifteen thousand. And, and I know that sounds overwhelming, but there's other options. And but you get what you pay for. And vanity presses, you're paying them money to do a lot of this work for you. So, is it worth it? Is it in your budget to give up that control and let somebody else do it for you? If it is, it's an option. There's no set way to do this i will say there's a right and wrong way but it's up to your personal experience what is right and wrong i cannot tell you what i did is right for you and uh you've heard three different very different opinions and experiences in very different types of books right here tonight and we're still kind of shrugging and going well there's a thing <laughs> so any closing thoughts on this tara Research, ask people what's going on, you know, where do they um, do stuff and consider getting your own ISBNs. Be a Bowker if you really want to take this seriously, if you're going to do more than one book, because that gives you the flexibility. You can load it into KDP so that you can have a Kindle there and have it accessible to the, to the Kindle lending library, which is a phenomenal thing to do you can have it where you can purchase your author copies at a small enough price that in person you know when somebody's there and you can start saying well i can go ahead and i can give a discount because it's in person yeah, yeah. that helps when you're that with that kind of sale but then you can also go ahead and load it up into ingram with the possibility of, of that's where 
brick and mortar stores and libraries will see your title and if it's good cover and you've got a good blurb they will purchase a couple of copies if every library in the company in, in the world in the country purchases a copy of your book you've sent sold 10,000 copies okay there are a lot of libraries in this country and then you can go ahead and also set it up into lulu where if you have your own blog or your own website use that api little app and you can sell directly from your website. So it gives you some flexibility. If you're going to sell more than, if you're only gonna sell one book, go with Amazon. Robert? Um, I think I've said most everything. I, I, I Just on that last point, not Tara's last point, but the Vanity Press last point, authors, should be paid for their work. Everyone should be paid for their work. Artists, editors, formatters, authors should be paid for the work. A publisher pays authors. If you are paying a publisher, something is not right in that equation, all right? Publishers pay authors, usually a royalty when they sell your book. If you're paying a publisher to make your book happen there's not the royalty thing you're not making any money folks that's really what it comes down to so i'll end on that and i'll end by Pay saying it's constantly changing we're constantly learning there's dozens if not hundreds of ways to do this and it'll keep changing as technology and our lifestyle changes and uh yeah if you have any questions that you'd like to see us do a whole nother show on this, rightnightshow at gmail.com is where to send the email, rightnightshow at gmail.com. It'll let us know you're interested. It'll let us know we have more to talk about because we had planned this as a 35 to 45 minute show. We have gone to hour 15 plus. That's showing you how passionate we are, how confused we are, how experienced we are, and all those things mushed together. I want to thank my moderators for jumping in, all our viewers for jumping in, throwing in their comments and their thoughts and their questions. Invaluable, guys. Invaluable. Thank you so much. I also want to thank everybody who's listening to the podcast, everybody who on the live stream at twitch.tv slash Travis Taver Talk, who through bits, subs, merchandise hosts, uh, raids, our folks on Patreon and a PayPal monthly subscription, etc., and we could go on for another hour and a half about this and never hit bottom. Um, let alone if we brought in other people to discuss it with their experiences. So let's get some outro music. Make sure you check out the other episodes of Right Night as well as our podcast, Talk of the Tavern, and the other stuff we have out there. And we will catch you next time. Good night, everybody. Say good night, Gracie. Night. Good night, Gracie. Thank you for joining author Travis I. Sivart and the other writers, content creators, and all around amazing people for our discussion here on Right Night. Join us again soon, and until you do, make sure you create with passion, enjoy the journey, and remember, every night can be right night.